for our project, we did drowning victim detection system, which as you can see in the system diagram, involves the Judson Nano and pretty much any sort of processing power we could have used to actually accomplish the program. Our system setup was pretty easy. It was a Jetson along with a monitor, some speakers that could display our audio alerts, and then some sort of keyboard and mouse that was able to help us actually toggle the program and show all of our demos. For our results, we can look at the pictures below and then we'll actually show some videos to show how everything works as precisely as we were able to make it. The goal in our project was to help all of our fellow kids and even adults in any sort of drowning situations. We wanted to help augment the sort of preventative side of lifeguarding and any sort of drowning help in any sort of pools, um, beaches, even if we could get into that sort of range, and even house pools, casino pools. So as you can see in the videos, we use machine learning deep learning AI to pretty much teach the coding or sorry the code to say how to detect a drowning person which was an active drowning person and then how to just not detect the other people in the pool that were just swimming normally splashing any sort of movement that was normal in our eyes to do this we used tensorflow and OpenCV, and then pretty much had hours and hours of video that was used to help train the program and to make it as, so to say, perfect as it could be. To do this, we did a lot of videos of every different stroke in swimming, such as freestyle, butterfly, doggy paddle, and pretty much any sort of splashing that a kid could do, or even an adult or toddler, any sort of age group like that. And then, for the actual drowning process, we wanted to go for the more active drowning style of drowning. We would hope that the active drowning would start at first and then hopefully the passive would never come to be because once it's passive, the chance of actually saving the person has lowered by a, a very big percent. And we would hope that this was more of an augmentation for lifeguards so that they would easily pick up any sort of misses that they would have. Going off of that, this seemed like a very important thing to us because me and Steven, so Rudy and Steven, were actually lifeguards before and Rudy, me, am still a manager at the Venetian Resort. So I've been able to see a lot of possibilities where lifeguards are either too tired, they didn't sleep well, they were partying the night before, or they're even not just paying attention, zoning out, it happens to everybody. So this is a little wake up call to anyone that could be missing something as important as someone drowning in the pool right in front of them. Not only that, but it could be used in houses. This could be set up to an actual app that could alert you. Let's say you were leaving some kids at home with a babysitter and somehow the kids went out to the pool by themselves. It would send you an alert immediately if someone jumped in the pool and is actually actively drowning. So this could be used in a lot of potential ways and all of them pretty good if we could say so ourselves. Some of our competitors, Link Sight and Sightbit, have actually incorporated some of the things we are trying to do in let's say a beach setting or in Olympic sized pools but we thought that what we did is more of a broader area coverage and we do live in Vegas so casinos are pretty much all over the strip and almost every single casino has some sort of pool area so this would be perfect to incorporate in any of those areas that could be deemed necessary not only that but we would like to also have a lot of propositions on how to increase the coverage for our system such as possibly going into the little verse of underwater cameras lastly we would like to say thank you to dr greg and thank you to mr brendan morris for help in our project was a lot of help and was a lot of fun thank you